Hey there. Well, I've got all of my pickets set here, and I'm starting to work on the shoes. And uh, three things I want to talk to you about with the shoes. First of all, you've got a little set screw here on the, on the shoes. Go through all of your shoes before you do anything with them and make sure that all of your set screws are working. A lot of them are stiff. You can expect to round over a lot of your Allen wrenches, so have some spare Allen wrenches. If you find a shoe where the set screw is stiff, carefully remove the set screw. I got it in my grandpa's tap and die set. I don't know if this is the tap or the die, but use this thingy to just sort of clean out the threads on the set screw, and then your set screw will go back in just fine and, and will work great. The um, second thing that I want to share with you on the shoes is this is an angled shoe for the underside of a railing, and I believe this is a 40 degree pitch. Well, some of the pitches on my railing are much more than 40, and some are much more, much, much less than 40. So what I found I needed to do is on um, the places where the angle doesn't match 40, I'll just put the shoe against the railing and scribe a line. And this is soft steel. It's very easy to uh, use your angle grinder and get whatever angle you need on these. So just scribe the line that you need. Uh, my railing's a little bit curved underneath. And then I just use my angle grinder to cut the correct angle and that worked beautifully. I found that um, I usually needed to enlarge, slightly enlarge the holes at the top of the railing. And I tried a lot of different tools to do that. You'd think that a spade bit would be the best tool to do that, but I found that a spade bit really jumped around and damaged the underside of the railing. Then I got a tip from Stair Warehouse to put a dowel in the hole so that the spade bit has something to grab onto. And where I had an even angle, a flat angle, that worked great. But where I had um, angled holes for the railing, that just didn't work so well. So after trial and error, I found the perfect tool for enlarging the holes underneath the railing. And it's a Dremel tool with a sanding drum on it. Not very sophisticated, but it works great. It gets up there into the hole. I'm using a quarter inch drum. A half inch drum would work faster. But it gets right up into the hole and enlarges it beautifully. Ugh, I should have had my safety glasses on. But it enlarges the hole beautifully with no damage to the underside of the railing. And a lot of times it's just the upper portion of the hole that needs enlarged, not the lower portion, so that when you're angling in your picket, it will fit up in there. Perfect tool to use. Hi everyone, I'm to the final segment here. Well, actually my railing is done and it looks absolutely beautiful, but one thing we didn't talk about is the final step, which is epoxying the railing. I wanted to show you, this is the little epoxy gun that Star Warehouse sells, and I absolutely love it. It's great. So you buy the epoxy gun, and then you buy these cartridges of epoxy. And what's great is you don't need to cut anything. The cartridge comes, it doesn't come with this nozzle on it. Still a little bit wet. It comes like this. You just twist off the end, and you twist in the little nozzle. And what's cool about the nozzle is the epoxy swirls through the nozzle, mixing it automatically so you don't have to worry about mixing it. So what you do with the gun is it just flips open. All you do is drop your cartridge in, flip it shut, and you're ready to go. Um, the epoxy works great. Now I, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. You can, and it's probably the recommended way, Take your picket out, fill the holes top and bottom with epoxy, and insert your picket. And that way epoxy totally surrounds both ends of the picket. I chose to just epoxy the picket in place by <clears throat> this nozzle, the, the end of the nozzle is so thin that you can really get pinpoint precision in where you put your epoxy. So I chose to just leave the picket in place and go around the hole and insert the epoxy into the hole. Probably not as good as doing it the other way, but I already had everything fit and, and had double and triple checked everything and just didn't want to remove the pickets. I was a little nervous about doing the upper holes and having the epoxy drain out, but it really doesn't. And the epoxy takes about, 
they say you've got 15 minutes of working time. Um, I found that after about an hour or two, your epoxy turns into the consistency of hot glue. So if you do have any drips or strings that have come out of the upper hole, it's really easy to clean up even you know one or two hours after you've done it. You can easily take a razor blade to it and it'll peel right off. After that, it sets up really hard like you would expect from epoxy. Now I won't give you the final shot of my railing until my new carpet comes in in a couple days, but there are a couple tips that I want to share with you. Now remember that I am an experienced DIYer, I, but I had never done this before. So if you're a pro, you know, you already know these tips. But if you're thinking of taking on this project like I did, um, not having any experience in doing anything like this, then some of these tips might come in handy. The first tip I have for you is to plan. Now, um, there's a tutorial on the Stair Warehouse site of how to use Photoshop to actually plan out your baluster design. And um, there's just an infinite number of ways that you can design your balusters, so putting some planning in ahead of time is really good. My second tip before you get started is make sure that you have all of the right tools. Now here's a list of all of the tools that I used. Um, first of all, I used a drill with a spade bit, uh, a Dremel tool with a sanding drum, dowels, <clears throat> and, and you use the dowels so that the uh, spade bit can grab onto those when you're enlarging your holes, an angle grinder with metal cutoff blades or discs, uh, several Allen wrenches. I think the size I used was 3 30 seconds, but you'll find um, that you might tend to round over some of your Allen wrenches working with the set screws on the shoes if you're working with shoes. So have a couple on hand. Soapstone or chalk for marking your cutoff points on your balusters. Safety gear for metal cutting. So that means that you've got, um, minimally, you've got eye protection. Um, ideally, you've got a full face shield. You've got ear protection. It's really loud cutting those things off. And uh, gloves. A tape measure, obviously. And finally, a tap and die kit. Um, definitely the set screws on the shoes, at least the ones I had. Many of them needed the threads cleaned out with a tapping tool. The third tip that I would give you before you get started on install is go through all of your shoes if you're using them. Make sure they fit, make sure that you have the right sizes, and make sure that all of your set screws are operational. If you have to order replacements from Stair Warehouse, you want to get those replacements before you actually start installation. The fourth tip that I would give you is remove your balusters carefully. If you've got brads holding your balusters in place and you twist your balusters out gently, you'll most likely twist the brads out with the baluster and you won't have to do a lot of digging around with needle nose pliers to get those brads out. Finally, the, the fifth tip that I would give you before you start to epoxy anything is double and triple check all of your dry fit balusters. Make sure that all of your shoes are in place, all of your shoes are functional, all of your shoes are angled in the right direction because once you start gluing those things in you do not want to have to remove those. So double check, triple check, you know check the night before so that you can sleep on it and check again in the morning. You just can't check too much when you're working with the permanence of epoxy. So that's it. My railing is done. It's absolutely beautiful. I did it all myself. I saved two thousand dollars. I have this incredible sense of satisfaction every time I look at it. It's a project anyone can do. It's labor intensive, that's for sure, but it's not difficult. Anyone can do this. I can't wait to show you the finished project when the carpet comes in, and I hope it's something that you'll take on yourself. By the way, I just want to mention that working with Steer Warehouse was phenomenal. Their customer service was just amazing. Every time I had a question, ran into a problem, I gave them a call and I had just an immediate positive response and they were just excellent to work with.